anybody that's followed me for any period of time knows that I use Vim as my editor of choice or NeoVim more specifically. And from time to time, I get asked by people how I handle conflict resolution in Git. And merge conflicts arise in your repositories when you're often working in a team or in some environment. In this specific scenario we're going to talk about today is merging in dependabot conflicts. So when you've got multiple sort of similar, especially in Laravel, if you've got multiple packages that are all updating at the same time and some of them require on or depend on specific versions of Laravel, you might find conflicts with, um, you know, Symfony dependencies or Laravel framework dependencies and things like that. And so I came across one earlier today that I thought I might just drop a little video for, um, which was in bringing in this latest version of Sparcy's ignition package into this Laravel 9 project. And so you see you've got the merge conflicts there. Often um, and basically always in the in the context of Dependabot, this is going to be in your composer.log file. And so I've been asked, you know, in in a scenario where I'm using Vim and I spend most of my time in the terminal, how do I go about resolving merge conflicts? And so I've got um, a key binding setup, which is essentially closing brace N, which will take me to the next conflict. Um, and then uh, that'll allow me to kind of jump through the, the hunks. So this this is the separator. This is the, the conflicting section of the composer lock file from the, the pull request. And then I can use opening brace and end to go back um, to previous versions or, or previous hunks. Um, and in this scenario, we can see that, you know, this is Laravel framework version 9.3.1. And here we've got 9.5.1. So when we're doing dependency updates in this scenario, typically you're going to want to keep the the more recent ones. So I can use those same key bindings. And I've spoken about this before on the North Meet South web podcast, which I'll put a link to in the, in the notes for this video, where Vim is all about motions and stringing together motions and doing all that kind of stuff. So you know, if, if you've used Vim before, you know that DD deletes a line, you can use period to, to do that. And you can do this sort of manually. Um, and, and that's certainly one way of doing it. If, if, you know, you want to just be mashing your keys, but Vim's all about trying to be as efficient as possible. So you can string these motions together and use D a uh, closing brace N, and that'll basically delete that entire section from, you know, from where that where the cursor is, the cursor line, down to the next match. So the same way that we can move through it. And so once we've kind of decided which of those versions we want to keep, so in this context, obviously we want the more recent one, we can kind of just skip through the file and apply those same sort of changes all the way through. Uh, in the context of a, a conflict in the composer.lock file, you basically always, in my experience, you're always gonna have conflicts on the same chunk. So. Um, you know, you're always going to be deleting the first chunk and keeping the second chunk in, in each conflicted state. And so we just go through this whole file, which is a boring process, but um, not a terribly time consuming one, depending on how many of these you're going through. But this is for, for simple cases, typically what I'll do um, to, to work through the conflicts and just, you know, it's just a matter of running the keys um, and, and, and bashing the keys that way. And so I'll go through this and then I'll show you another approach that I use for a little for, for more complicated conflict scenarios. Um, so that's it. So that's, you know, essentially all it is. So if we close that out, we've now got no conflicts in that file. We can merge it and we can push it up and, and do all of that kind of stuff. Um, the, the other thing, as I said, I, I do like to stay in the terminal as much as possible. So there's another tool that I use from time to time for, for more complex merge requirements if I need to do sort of patch requests and things like that. Um, it's a tool called lazy Git. And this is still in the terminal, but it is a like a graphical or a TUI, a text user interface. And this allows me to kind of go through my, um, my conflicts and I can step through them sort of one at a time. Um, in fact, I think I've mashed the key there. So if I just start this again. Uh, so if I can press enter, I can go into that file and then I can sort of it's a bit harder to see on this screen resolution because the, the text is so large, but the same kind of thing, you know, do I want this chunk or this chunk? Um, and this way you can just go J and K to go up and down between the chunks and then space to select the one that you want. And it figures out, okay, you picked the second chunk the first time. So we'll just keep picking that the whole way through and you just space your way through until you get to the end. Lazy Git will then prompt you 
um, all merge conflicts are resolved. You want to continue, press enter. Um, that's done. And then you just push and off it goes and that'll go up to the repository and happy days.